Good Saturday morning, everybody. I'm Erica Simon. And I'm Jeff Ealing. Hope you're off to a great Saturday. We've got an update now on a story a lot of you are following on ABC13.com. A mother of five believed to be murdered by her ex-boyfriend. He is now on the run. We spoke to the victim's family. ABC13's TJ Parker joins us now to catch us up with what they said. TJ? Yeah, good morning. Deputies are looking for 29 year old Cameron Davis. They say he is accused of killing his ex girlfriend, Rhinesia Sanford. Deputies say Davis shot her multiple times at a Cypress Station apartment complex Thursday morning. Records show he was charged in May for assaulting Sanford. In that case, she told deputies he hit her 10 times after breaking up with him. And then last month, he was charged with retaliation after being accused of threatening to murder her. Sanford's mom says her daughter's and Davis's relationship had been violent for months. Just like a month ago, she had told me she was trying to get away from him. It's a horrible situation. It's, it's a horrible situation. It's horrible. It's terrible. You know, I mean, it's, it's a feeling that you cannot describe. And court records show that Davis was never arrested for any of those past domestic charges. Sadly, Sanford leaves behind five children. Reporting downtown, I'm TJ Parker, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. TJ, thanks. Got some breaking news out of Walnut Springs, Texas. It is urgent. That town's about an hour southwest of Fort Worth. An Amber Alert has been issued for this little girl on your screen, seven-year-old Jessie Lowry. She's three feet tall and usually has blonde hair, but she's believed to have dyed her hair blue recently. She's got brown eyes and was last seen wearing a blue shirt with black pants. Police say they're looking for this man, 34-year-old Randall Thurman. Don't know his relationship to the girl, but he's believed to be driving a silver 2011 Chrysler four door vehicle with license plate number P D J three six five eight. He's also got a cross sticker on the back windshield. If you see either Jesse or Randall, please call police. New this morning, the family of a teenager killed in a road rage shooting says the man charged in connection with that murder, Gerald Williams, is now out of jail. We checked the district clerk's office and found that the, he is no longer listed as being in jail and that bond was approved. Williams is accused of killing 17-year-old David Castro as his family left an Astros ball game back in July. We'll be following up with the Castro family to get more on this later today. Happening today, search teams will once again try to bring a missing mother home. Ashley Guillory from Houston vanished without a trace on September 4th. Today, Texas EquiSearch is going to lead a new effort to find her along Fondren and Highway 90. That's not too far from Independence Park in Missouri City, where they searched last week. HPD Homicide is working the case, but we haven't been able to get any updates from them. And this is one of the most talked about stories on the ABC 13 Facebook page. A House of Pies manager is accused of stealing a customer's credit card. Westview's, Westview police say the customer lost it at the restaurant on Kirby last month and that manager Tariq Tahan took the card and then went on a shopping spree, purchasing $1,500 worth of goods at several stores. Tahan is now charged with credit card abuse. Take note of your drive on the southwest side this weekend. US 59 in both directions closed right at the West Loop throughout the weekend. With all main lanes closed, I-10 is a good alternate route into the heart of the city, Westheimer and Bissonette as well, because there are frontage road closures as well. Southbound along the West Loop from Richmond to West Park, all throughout the weekend. And why are they closing all of the main lanes? This is accommodating work on the US 59 northbound ramp to 610. That ramp is scheduled to open later this year. And get ready, US 59 will also close the weekend of October 1st through the 4th. Federal officials have made a lot of recommendations after the deadly February freeze of this year, but are we really any better off heading into this winter? It's something we all want to know about after that traumatic experience. Unfortunately, most experts say no, we're not ready. A preliminary report by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, also known as FERC, was released this week. So the report found freezing accounted for 44% of the issues, followed by natural gas fuel shortages. And if another storm arrived this winter, we can expect similar conditions as we did back in February. We would still see uh, a lot of power plants not adequately winterized, and we would still see 
the natural gas supply system that that really isn't prepared for deep freezes and we'd still be on this isolated grid. So I think if it happened again, we would have fewer blackouts, but there would still be many hundreds of thousands of people in the dark. Well, it's important to add that we were advised many years ago to winterize our plants. Well, that officer or professor, excuse me, says he just said hundreds of thousands would still be in the dark if we had a similar storm. A final report from FERC is expected in November. Well, we're now starting to see a decline in COVID cases in Houston area schools. But the state did just cross an unsettling milestone. Listen to this. The Texas Tribune's headline pretty much sums it up. Texas schools have reported more coronavirus cases in less than two months than they did the entire 2021 2020-2021 school year. In our local schools, there are 5,800 active cases right now. That is down 35% since last week. Our 13 investigates team says so schools that don't have mask mandates have three times as many cases as those that do. Americans who are eligible for a COVID-19 booster shot can now get them at 6,000 CVS locations all across the country. They're offering only the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine right now. Customers can schedule an appointment on the pharmacy's website. It's CVS.com. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends booster shots for older adults, people who live in long-term care facilities, and some people with underlying health conditions. Adults who have jobs with incre increased risk of COVID-19 can also receive a booster shot. If you still need help due to the pandemic, there is a rent resource fair happening this morning. It's going on at 5737 Cullen Boulevard from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. You can get help applying for rental assistance and find out more about relief programs that are available to you. All right, the Fort Bend County Fair is now open. Woohoo! The 10 day long event features livestock shows, rodeo action, live music, and great carnival food like funnel cakes and corny dogs. Tickets are 15 bucks at the gate for adults or five bucks for those aged six to seven. Those five and under get in free. Season passes are also available for $40. Today's hours are 10 a.m. until 1 a.m. Well, today you can spend your time helping others. Volunteers are needed at a Hurricane Ida distribution drive in Fort Bend County. This is happening at Wham on Meadow Glen Lane. Happens from 9 a.m. until noon. You can find specific information to volunteer on Judge KP George's Twitter page. Well, if you lost a tree in the winter storm, speaking of, or in the recent hurricane, now's your chance to get a new one for free. Today, State Farm and the Arbor Day Foundation will be handing out thousands of free trees. It starts at 9 a.m. for the Trees of Houston office that's located at 2001 West 34th Street. And also happening today, the Children's Museum of Houston is holding its Mid-Autumn Festival, featuring stories, parades, and dance showcasing the Vietnamese culture. Kids can create paper lanterns and tiger masks to celebrate. This event runs from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and it's included with your general admission ticket, which is 12 bucks for anyone aged one or older. Meanwhile, college football is happening today on ABC 13, kicking things off at 11 a.m. Texas Tech taking on Texas. And then at 2.30, Rutgers is facing 19th ranked Michigan. And our primetime matchup is going to be a good one. It's West Virginia taking on number four ranked Oklahoma. Kevin? A uh, good day to watch some college football or a good day to get outside. Maybe bring the TV outside. Then you can do both. Uh, high temperatures today are going to warm up into the mid 80s. It's another one of those cool starts, but another day with a lot of sunshine and crucially low humidity. That's key because even as these temperatures warm into the mid 80s with low humidity, it's still going to feel good out there. Now, long term, this high pressure will drift off to the east and the flow around that is going to start bringing these winds and shifting them just a bit more out of the south and east, drawing up that Gulf moisture. And as that happens, we're going to start to slowly increase that humidity. So you'll feel the humidity increase a bit on Sunday. Notice a bit more cloud cover and then by next week it's not just clouds and humidity it's rain and thunderstorms that start to roll in as you move through the following week and you look at rain over the next seven days a good chance of seeing about an inch of rain area wide not anticipating any significant flooding with this but multiple rounds of showers and storms as we get into a much busier weather pattern than what we're seeing now in the short term, it's still perfect, 86 degrees and sunny. By Sunday, it's 87, a bit more humid as well. Those rain chances really start to climb next week, especially for the middle of next week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's when the rain peaks. And then just in time for next weekend, it looks like we'll be drying out yet again. Have a great Saturday.